Duck Dynasty's Jace and Missy Robertson are familiar faces to millions. He's the sarcastic son of Phil and Kay Robertson and helps run the famous family business. Jace and Missy married straight out of high school, and the early years were filled with joy. First, they welcomed their son Reed into the family, and later Cole. A few years later, they decided to have another baby, and that's when the challenges started. And it took us almost a year to get pregnant. Eight, nine weeks along, I found out this baby was growing inside my tube and had not traveled all the way down, and there's no way for this baby to live. I would have to go in and take it out. She soon healed and three months later was pregnant again. But due to an oversight, there were serious complications. I did not receive uh, Rogam after my miscarriage, and I am a negative, and any, any woman with negative blood knows they have to have a Rogam shot to equalize their blood for future pregnancies. Doctors told Jason Missy there was only a 1% chance this baby would live. My body was gonna push this baby out. I was told the goal is to get this baby to 26 weeks before we have to take this baby from your body. That was not something I wanted to hear after having a miscarriage. Jace says they put their family in God's hands. We just weren't praying for, you know, everything to be okay. I was like, look, no matter what happens, we're gonna trust you. It's kind of a scary place to be. Then, some good news. Well, the farther we got along in the pregnancy, we realized this baby is acting normally. And the specialist said, there is no other explanation than to know that this baby must have negative blood. The couple thanked God for their miracle and with excitement prepared for the birth of their daughter, Mia. 31 weeks, we went in for the fun 4D ultrasound to see the baby's face and noticed that something was a little off about her facial features. The fun ultrasound soon turned somber. Doctors analyzed the video and gave the Robertsons bad news. For one thing we know just from looking that it's a cleft lip and possibly a cleft palate, but there's no way to know that until the baby's born. Jace and Missy were shocked. They knew nothing of the condition and were unsure of Mia's future. Well, the day she was born, I mean, it really was just kind of chilling. When I saw her, I, in my mind, I thought, okay, this is severe. Then, all of a sudden, she was kind of struggling to breathe, and then just panic ensued. Doctors made Jace leave the room. As he walked out, he again called on God in prayer. Please let her live. Now, we've gone through all this. I was thinking, you know, Give her to us and we will do our best. Mia was a fighter, and after doctors discovered fluid on her lungs, she left the NICU within the week. Thrilled to have her home, Jace and Missy realized the struggle was far from over. Without a pallet, Mia could not feed properly. For the first two weeks, I don't think we slept over an hour we at didn't a time sleep much, because no. she was always choking. When she was 17 days old, they took Mia to a specialist in Dallas. They created what we call like a fake pallet, and it's like a roof of their mouth until they're old enough and can handle that palatal surgery. However, that sounds great, but that was the worst day of my life. It was bad. <laughs> I, I was real emotional when she was born. Now we haven't had any rest. We walk in there, and this doctor shoves this plaster in her mouth. I mean, like way too much and way too forceful. And I'm like, I mean, she just, you know, she's not breathing. And then it didn't come out right. So then he's like, we got to do this again. That's when my and big rock left the room. <laughs> I was <laughs> this close. I was this close <laughs> to hitting that guy right between the eyes. And so, well, I went to the parking lot and I mean, I bawled like a baby. I was like, this is going to be difficult. Just to have to watch this, you know. To this day, that difficulty has not stopped. This is a process that exists as long as she grows. It's not like we've always had everything together and we're like, you know, the perfect family who knew this was coming and could deal with all the ups and downs without flaws. That's not true at all. I mean, we struggled with this. At least each nine to 12 months, a different process starts. 
You gotta give me a week. Once that process, I have a week of trying to deal with it, grieving, trying to figure out, you know, because it's a change of lifestyle sometimes for her. She can't be active and play like other children because she's wearing devices. And you cry a lot. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I also have strong women around me that I can send a Facebook message or I can, you know, get on a group text and say, please pray for this right now. Even when her parents have struggled, Mia has rarely complained. She loves life. She is not shy. She makes friends instantly. And it's easy to look back now and say, oh, now we see why God did this. God is using us to help other kids and other families because now we're the Wiley veterans. We have this knowledge. You know, that's why we started our foundation. We're like, you know what? We need to talk to these people and try to help them. She teaches us truly it is the spiritual nature of us that is the most important. She's so friendly and people gravitate towards her is because all the suffering she's gone through has created this perseverance and there's character, and then there's hope. Well, you know, who doesn't want hope? 